Electrolysis uses electricity to drive non-spontaneous reactions, which is really useful for recharging batteries, splitting water to make hydrogen, producing chlorine from brine. In this video, I'm going to run through the chemistry behind the electrolysis of water, the electrolysis of sodium chloride solution, and I'm also going to share the rules for predicting the products of the reactions from the electrolysis of metal salt solutions. Water is a stable molecule, which means that under standard conditions, hydrogen and oxygen will spontaneously re react to form water. However, water will not spontaneously fall apart to form hydrogen and oxygen. And this is borne out by two measures of spontaneity or feasibility. If we have a look at the value for Gibbs energy, it is exceedingly positive indeed, plus 474 kilojoules per mole. And the value for E cell is minus 1.23. For a spontaneous reaction, we need a positive E cell value and a negative value for Gibbs energy change. However, what this number here does tell me for E cell is that if I provide a more than 1.23 volts to this reaction, I can make it happen. And that is what we're doing in electrolysis. We are using the energy and electricity to drive non-spontaneous reactions. So let's have a look at the setup. We have two electrodes. We have got an anode and a cathode. These electrodes need to be inert. So for example, they might be composed of graphite or perhaps platinum. The electrolyte, the beaker, is filled with acidified water. We find that if we try to do electrolysis on completely pure water, there aren't enough ions present to enable the process. Um, we need acidified water to increase the conductivity. If I link up my two electrodes via a battery that's providing more than plus 1.23 volts, then two reactions are going to happen. At the anode, water is going to be oxidized. So we have oxidation reactions happening at the anode. So water is going to lose electrons, forming hydrogen ions, which will remain in solution, oxygen gas, which is bubbled off, and four electrons. At the cathode, I have a reduction reaction happening. So water is being reduced, so it's gaining electrons. 2H2O plus 2E minus going to form H2 and two hydroxide ions which are going to remain in solution. So electrolysis of water, acidified water, is going to produce oxygen at the anode and hydrogen at the cathode. The electrolysis of brine or sodium chloride solution is the basis of the chloralkali industry. Um, by mining rock salt, making it up into a fairly concentrated solution, we can produce, via electrolysis, chlorine and sodium hydroxide and hydrogen, all three of which are really important industrial products. So our electrolyte is essentially sodium chloride in solution, which means that in my beaker, I'm going to have sodium ions and chloride ions and plenty of water molecules. When I power up my electrical supply, then the chloride ions are going to be attracted to the anode and sodium ions are going to be attracted to the cathode. At each electrode, I've got two possible reactions in terms of oxidation or reduction. The electrodes themselves, once again, are inert. In the chloralkali process, the anode is made of titanium and the cathode is made of nickel. So let's have a look at the actual reactions happening. 
So once again, at the anode, we know that we are looking at oxidation. So what are my possibilities? Either I can oxidise the chloride ions, or I can oxidise water. We've just seen the half equation for that. Now, despite the chlorine chloride half cell having a more positive standard electrode potential, oxidising chloride ions is kinetically more favourable than oxidising water. So that means that the actual reaction we see happening here are chloride ions losing electrons to form chlorine gas. And that gas we can see is bubbled off at the anode. The cathode is where reduction reactions happen. And once again, we've got two possibilities. Either I could be reducing my sodium ions or I can be reducing water. So if I were to reduce my sodium ions, they gain electrons to form sodium metal. And the standard electrode potential for this reaction is minus 2.71 volts. For water, we've just seen this equation. form hydrogen gas and hydroxide ions. And the standard electrode potential for this reaction is minus 0.83 volts. So it is more feasible, it's easier, whichever way you would like to say it, to reduce water than it is sodium, because sodium has got such a negative standard electrode potential. So this is the reaction that's going to happen, and hydrogen gas is going to be produced. The sodium ions remain in solution. So the overall equation for the electrolysis of brine, we've got two water molecules reacting with chloride ions to form chlorine and hydrogen. And hydroxide ions. And the E cell for that is minus 2.19 volts. So in order to make this process happen, I would need an electrical supply or battery that was producing more than 2.19 volts because we're driving this reaction against its spontaneous nature. We can electrolyze many metal salt solutions and rather than using electrode potential data to predict the products of the reaction, whether it's water or the anion, water or the cation that are going to be oxidized or reduced, uh, there are a few simple rules. So let's start by considering the anode. So as we've seen at the anode, we have oxidation, and that is either of water or the anion. One or the other is going to lose electrons and be oxidized. So the rules are, if my anion, if my metal salt is a halide, so from group seven, then it is the halide that will be oxidized. So we're talking bromide ions, chloride ions, iodide ions are common. In which case, so for example, say I had a solution of um, potassium bromide, then the bromide ions would be oxidized, not water. And I would form bromine. If the salt or the anion is a sulfate or a nitrate, so say copper sulfate, zinc nitrate, then water is oxidized. So for sulfates or nitrate, then it's water that's oxidized. And we've seen the half equation for that. So 2H2O going to form 4H plus, plus oxygen plus 
electrons. So the product of the anode would be oxygen gas. And if the salt is a hydroxide, then it's the hydroxide ion that is oxidized. So hydroxide ions losing electrons to form oxygen gas and water. So here we would have a product of oxygen at the anode. When we're talking about the cathode, then this is where reduction is happening. So a site of reduction. So either we are reducing water or the cation, i.e. the metal ion of our salt. So the rules are such that if the metal is from group one, group two, or it is aluminium, then because they tend to have uh, very negative standard electrode potentials, they're reactive metals, then we find that they stay in solution as ions and water is reduced, then water is reduced. So, water gaining electrons to form hydrogen gas and hydroxide ions. So the product of the cathode would be hydrogen. If it's another metal, so it's not from group one, it's not from group two, it, it's not aluminium, then the metal ion is reduced and it's deposited on the cathode. So the classic example there is copper. So these are less reactive metals, generally speaking, although it's not quite that clear cut. Okay, so for other metals. metal ion is reduced. And finally, if we are electrolyzing an acid, then it's the hydrogen ions that are reduced. Two H plus plus two electrons going to form hydrogen gas. And once again, we'd have hydrogen bubbled off at the cathode. Going back a step, if it's the metal that is reduced, then that would be deposited on the cathode itself. If electrolysis is a specific syllabus statement for your A level, so I'm thinking OCRB and the Cambridge Chemistry Pre-U, you need to know these equations for the oxidation and the reduction of hydroxide ions and water. So you need to commit those to memory. You're expected to be able to reproduce those in the exam. If this has been useful, hit the subscribe button, the effortless way to support your studies. And by clicking the link in the blurb below, it'll take you straight to the Crunch Chemistry School, where you'll find all the resources you need to get that A-star grade at A-level. Together, we can do this.